Thanks for joining us today. My name is Ed DeRosa, and I'm a lead data scientist at Starbucks. And I'm also joined today with one of our senior data scientists, uh, Selba Jane. We are both excited to talk with you about our real-time product recommendations at our drive through stores. But first, a little bit about Starbucks. In 1971, we opened our first store in Seattle's Pike Place Market. And for more than 50 years, we have been proud to call Seattle our home, expanding to over 34,000 stores worldwide. Our mission is to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. And with our partners, our coffee, and our customers at our core, we strive every day to create a culture of warmth and belonging where everyone is welcome. So let's review our customer journey at drive-thru. So grounded in our mission, uh, we are able to connect to our customers to provide dynamic store level recommendations for over 600 Starbucks products through our digital order screens. First, uh, as a customer enters the drive through lane, they see an A-frame with marketed products such as seasonal and new items. And next, they, uh, the customer views a pre-board with a shorter list of menu items as part of the pre-sale. Uh, then the customer arrives and pulls it into the uh, drive through order screen, which also has a separate display with a broader selection of menu items. The customer places their order at, digital, at the digital order screen where we provide dynamic content such as customer order and product recommendations. Prior to machine learning recommendations, the customer was receiving a human curated marketed items under the area which displayed their order. However, with machine learning recommendations, we are able to use real time contextual information such as time of day, uh, weather, what's popular in the store and what the customer has added to their cart to make recommendations more relevant to the customer. Um, we break up our recommendations into two parts. Um, so the first is before the customer has added any items to the cart, or we call that the zero cart, and which they'll see uh, four items which are popular at, at the time of day um, for the customer. Um, or for the store. And after they've placed one item into their cart, then we uh, show a second recommendation, which uses that information of the item carted in a plus cart recommendation. And with that, I'll move on to the demo. So this just shows the cus a customer uh, ordering at drive through So you see um, that the customer has ordered a mocha, and this is a plus cart recommendation, which shows four uh, additional items that the customer might might uh, want to add to their cart. So again, this is uh, right now just store level, um, but we do uh, foresee in the future the possibility of introducing more personalized items based on customer identity. And with that, I'll hand it over to uh, Selba Jane to talk more about the reinforcement learning and other algorithms that drive our system. Hi, everybody. I'm Sulbha Jain. I'm a senior data scientist at Starbucks working on the drive through project. Uh, with this background about our project, I'm going to move towards why we are using reinforcement learning for the drive through solution. So the reinforcement learning solutions are good for handling the unknowns which in, in, in our case were there was lack of likelihood estimates for products. We didn't know which products would be converting if we show a given set of handful products. There was also a product uncertainty tied with the image impact on the digital menu board. Then another thing that we want to be uh, cautious about was cold start. So in Starbucks, we are adding new stores or launching new products. We wanted a solution which would be able to generalize well. We also wanted to promote product catalog exploration with our solution here. We wanted the customers and the, prod and the product owners wanted as well to give a solution which would enable measure exploration on the product catalog. With all this, 
we wanted to optimize on average ticket and drive conversion. So now we see why an agent who needs to move in a completely unknown environment ultimately reaching to its goal and maximizing the rewards. With this background, let's see a few terminologies about reinforcement learning. The first one is Markov decision process, which are classical formalization of sequential decision making where action influence not just the immediate rewards, but also subsequent situations or states and all those future rewards as well. The learning happens from interaction with the environment to achieve a goal. With the Markovian property here, the state must include all about all the information of the past agent and environment interaction that make a difference for the future. With this, what is an agent? The agent is the learner who, who learns to make a decision. Environment? The environment is nothing with which the agent interacts to get some rewards. And, and agent and environment continually interact where the agent selecting some actions and the environment responding to those actions and presenting new situations to the agent. The environment also gives rise to rewards which are nothing but special numerical values that the agent seeks to maximize over time through its choices of actions. Policy. A policy is a mapping from states to probabilities of selecting action. Value functions. Value functions are functions of state or also called state action pair that estimate how good it is for the agent to be in a given state. Here, the notion of goodness is defined in terms of future rewards that can be expected. Action value function, the value of taking an action A in a state S under a policy phi. With this terminology, let's move on deeper into the algorithm part for the reinforcement learning. The first term that we have covered here is model free. So model free algorithms are those which carry out an action multiple times and based on the outcomes, it will adjust the policy, the strategy behind its action for optimal rewards. Learning agent does not has the knowledge of the environment dynamics in order to make the prediction. Instead, it learns it from its experience. We also see there is an off policy algorithm there. An off-policy agent can learn statistically from other observed behaviors, including its own, and also random and exploratory behavior, and use that knowledge to understand how a different target behavior would perform. We also see that there is a policy iteration step happening in the reinforcement learning, which consists of two simultaneous interacting processes, one making the value function, consistent with the current policy, which is poly policy evaluation, and the other is making the policy greedy with respect to the cur current value function or called policy improvement. Uh, the evaluation and, and improvement processes are interleaved at even finer grain. That is, agent has identifiable policies and value functions, with the policy always being to improved with respect to the value function and the value function always being driven toward the value function for the policy as suggested in the right diagram of this slide. If both the evaluation process and the improvement process stabilize, that is no longer produce changes, then that's the point that value function and policy must be optimal. Understanding all these dynamics about the reinforcement learning model, let's see a quick recap on uh, was uh, reinforcement learning model versus a deep learning. In deep learning scenario, the model must learn, the agent must learn from scalar reward signal that is sparse, noisy, and delayed. For a deep learning, the data samples must be independent, while for reinforcement learning, there is a sequence, highly sequenced correlation data. The data distribution changes as an algorithm learns new behavior is changing for reinforcement. While for a deep learning, it requires a fixed underlying distribution. So now we see the DQN network overcomes this issue for a complex RL model. The Q network here is trained to minimize a sequence of laws function that changes at each iteration. It is a model free as it solves the RL task directly and using samples from experience buffer without explicitly constructing an estimate of the environment. 
It is also an off policy as it learns about the greedy strategy of maximizing the Q value while following a behavioral distribution that ensures adequate exploration of the state space. The behavior distribution is selected by an epsilon greedy that follows a greedy policy strategy with probability one minus epsilon and takes a random action with the probability epsilon. I hope you get a good premiere about the reinforcement learning background and also a DQN model. Moving on to our tech stack at Starbucks, we are using Azure as a cloud services provider. We are also using Databricks as our analytics and AI, AI platform. For the tools and languages, we are using Keras, TensorFlow, PyTorch, PySpark, Python, Scala, R, SQL, and Tableau. Challenges. Now we have a solution for smooth machine learning. What were the challenges we had while implementing the solution? It's hard. We had a hetero, we have a heterogeneous retail hardware. Our, remember, our stores are spanning across 50 years. So the hardware is ranging from different era. We also had to undergo lots of barista training where baristas were being equipped to provide a top-notch customer experience when they are entering the drive through lane and the kind of products and recommendation messaging they are seeing on the menu boards. The transaction scale at Starbucks is billions per year. We have big data coming to terabytes of data daily. Also, our response time, the 95th percentile of our SLA is less than 50 milliseconds. And currently, we are at 12 milliseconds average. We are serving about 10 k recommendation responses per minute at peak. At the same time, we had high variance for store diversity in terms of demographics, customer taste pattern, and weather. Last but not the least, the challenge was also about a bit of algorithmic cold start as agents need a lot of data in order to train and learn well in one policy. The learnings with this model here were that data quality really matters. We realized that considering the size of big data at Starbucks, we need Azure Databricks state-of-the-art platform for distributed training, deployment, and serving. At the same time, the choice of algorithm, which is reinforcement learning, and its inherent capabilities to explode and exploit in the face of uncertainty provided wide catalog exploration. The model here was using 100 plus features in production over two years, which were adding uh, understanding of the state for the agent. For the feature side, we have used exhaustive store features, near real time weather features, providing context for agent to learn the environment. For customer side, we were using customer taste profiles, improving the agent's knowledge to optimize the policy. Last but not the least, we also had a high focus on effective caching strategy, which is critical to hardened SLAs and throughputs. We also learned that to have a successful RL model in pipeline, you need to build human connections. And this solution was providing the connections with the baristas, with our stakeholders. Um, baristas were uh, helped by reducing their cognitive load, explicitly exclusion of out of the stock products. This also product, this product also wrote to open road to experimentation on agent strategy to optimize on product cost, conversion, etc. Our product stakeholders were able to do seasonal product launch and experiment. Our marketing stakeholders were able to uh, launch some marketing banner promotions. Our data scientist fraternity was able to experiment by using Bayesian traffic allocation to variants of multi-arm bandits and Thompson sampling. We also realized that building a reinforcement learning model with a deep neural network approach needs to be interpreted. A lot of time, a not technical stakeholders needs to be answered some questions like why certain products were recommended. So we realized that explainable AI helps in deciphering the black box RL model for further improvement. It also builds a scientific understanding to provide actionable next steps while algorithm optimization. At the same time, we are able to address stakeholders' interpretable questions to build trust, which is very much needed for a successful product outcome. At the same time, explainable AI helps in finding the meaning in the world when the contradictions are there between the reality and the knowledge. Last, explainable AI is helping complete the crisp DM loop 
for, from connecting the deployment to the business intake step. Monitoring and measurement are crucial. You realize that having a solid measurement pipeline or solid measurement dashboards to evaluate the model performance are very much needed to detect model drift, to identify when the model needs to be retrained or to improve prediction for the models once retraining has been happened. Our focus has been continuously on the AI sustainability as well. We are putting conscious efforts to reduce AI footprints while working towards 2030 environmental goal to cut out carbon, water, and waste footprints by half. Affirming to our commitment to a planet positive future, we are aiming towards 79% reduction in our projected end of year carbon emissions. So far, 2022 quarter one carbon intensity has dropped drastically. Some strategies that we followed are providing proactive purchase of new research reservations in Azure, optimizing data big clusters based on usage and partner awareness. Our next set of learnings are towards building and experimenting future growth opportunities. We don't want to block our future teams. We want to explore alternate algorithm optimization targets, for example, minimizing order prep time, minimizing product waste. At the same time, there is a heavy, heavy focus on the research for increasing UX dynamism and testing algorithmically wherever we can. We are also exploring methods to increase local and situational relevancy of the recommendation. So for all this, we are building an infrastructure to easily build, deploy, test, and evaluate. Our AI pipelines. With this, I will pass it on to Ed to summarize our learning so far. Thank you. In summary, we found that model free epsilon greedy policy iteration of DQN is a useful way to solve our challenges for doing reinforcement learning for recommendations at scale, and that feature engineering plays a significant role for our model training and performance. A good Measurement framework is necessary for monitoring and debugging. It was also important to build with experimentation in mind to be able to quickly iterate and improve versus our baseline or control, which in our case was a human curated control, which can offer its own challenges to provide information to the model as quickly as humans get that information. And we've been able to supplement our reinforcement learning approach with classical and supervised learning models and lastly, doing machine learning at scale can be challenging. So focus on good data quality, um, reliable pipelines, monitoring. So data is paramount. The teams here at Starbucks have done some amazing work to bring this to life at our stores. And um, if you would like to join our team, Starbucks is hiring. So if you'd like to solve interesting problems like this one, please apply. Thanks for listening.